So welcome to our hot seat for today. We have the next hour or so together, we have an opportunity to have someone in the room have their story shared. And then as a group, we're going to select the top story you'd like to see, have their dynamic shifted, have a more awareness of what's been going on for them, gratitude and love for their experience. So we're going to get into it. So during this session, I'd highly recommend you stay on to the very ends because we do the completion process at the end. So you might be an individual who the individual who we've been working on get, is selected and they select you. So stay on to that. It's also a really beautiful experience to see the entanglement um, at the very end as well. Now for the, I see that we have four people who are going to share what's been going on with their inner world at the moment and what they specifically would like to work on. So just for those individuals that don't get selected, that don't, don't think, oh, that, that I'm not going to get much value out of it. The, the way that this session tends to work is you're somehow somewhere in between that there's a message and there's a lesson and there's something in there for you or also in your own healing journey as well. So just make sure you take lots of notes write down the gold nuggets and wisdom that you have along the way and same as our participant as well. So we're all part of this experience and we're all entangled. So there will be lessons and learnings for everyone. Hey, Andy. Welcome, Barbara. Okay. So let's start with Brett. So Brett, uh, what, are you, what are you hoping to work through today? Yeah, great question. So I initially... Um, sort of reached out because I've been having some challenges in my relationship. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm also having some challenges in my business and I'm sort of like, is this, I've basically been getting these sort of internal messages. I'm having lots of trouble trying to explain this because I'm like, this is how I help people as well. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't even know how to, where to start. So yeah, basically I, yeah, I've been getting these messages whenever I close my eyes or dream, it's just like leave Sarah. I was like, I asked the tree, like, please give me a message. And I touched the tree and the tree is like, leave Sarah. Um, so yeah, I've just been having, like, I've never experienced this before. Um, and so yeah, it's basically just been this real challenge. So I'm, I initially applied to deal with um, my partner but I think it's something to do with me um, and sort of some context we've been together for about three years and in the last two years we've had two miscarriages so it's kind of like this part of me that's like and my business is not going very well so this part of me is like I'm being I'm sabotaging myself um, to try and get out of this relationship because I had a you know I've kind of also identified that I'm maybe repeating or am repeating a pattern that I was like in my previous relationship too, where I couldn't move it to the next level to get married and have a family. Uh, and I feel like maybe, um, <laughs> obviously I'm the problem. Um, but yeah, this part of me that's trying to get out of this relationship so I can go back to all the fun, easy initial stuff and not have to go through all the, the, the adversity or the fear of the unknown and stuff. And my partner's amazing. And, um, we've like, we've got a great dialogue and we understand each other and we can communicate and we talk about all these things and, and um, yeah, so I'm not exactly sure exactly what I want to work on, but I'm obviously clearly up, upset and, and charged with everything that's happening at the moment. So yeah, trying to get some clarity about where I'm going, even though I'm doing all the things I know that I need to do for my business and everything like that. So yes. Okay, so if I wrap that up into a little a little sentence, maybe yep. it's around, and you can tell me if it's spot on or not, yep. but it's around the decision whether to stay with Sarah or not. And that's um, entangled in this idea that you have a great relationship, but there's been some challenges whether you're thinking maybe there's a part of you wants to go to a fun life and it'd be easy. And then the fear of the unknown of really stepping in, what it mean to be committed and in the long-term relationship and get married and uh, yeah, uncertain of that. Yeah. So I proposed and, and then my whole body just like went on fire and I was like, ah. I'm like, I'm fine. Well, I don't know why I'm, I'm having this. Experience. Mm. So yeah, just interpreting that and trying to, and every time I have this leave Sarah thing, it's like I, I'm having to recommit and recommit and recommit. So I don't know whether that's a, a pattern that I play. I have a bit of a, 
shiny object syndrome and I like the art the I like it when I get to learn something new and I can progress really quickly and then I get to the the I've got to play the long term game consistently, blah 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 over over time. So Okay. Yeah. Okay, anyway. well thank you, Brett. Thank thank you. Okay. So Ken. Um well I initially wanted to unpack a few things around my mum who was um failing in her health and to do with the fact that I hadn't had much to do with her for quite a few years and she hasn't had anything to do with my kids yet. My sister and her, her kids, she's had a lot to do with them and I spent the weekend sitting with her through end of life medication that they started her on on Saturday but um, yeah, she passed away this morning so I guess what I'd wrote in my application has sort of changed quite significantly there. So, yeah, that's what I sort of wanted to do some work around. Okay. Thank you, Ken. Um, Steph. Good morning, Tanya. Good morning, team. Um, I'm really looking to work on chronic pain. Um, so I've been working uh, on resolving a chronic pain issue that I've had, I think, pretty much most of my life. So, but at least the last 35 that I can remember. Um, I get to stages where I see how it serves me. Um, and obviously, it's been the catalyst for me doing all my learning in terms of, of healing and therapies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I keep trying to go back and actually trying to resolve it like fully. Um, because as far as I've come, it's it's still there. Like there's still an element there. Uh, so it's mainly right-sided pain, um, generally around the, the right side of my face and neck. And then depending on the intensity, uh, just depends on how far it spreads down the body, et cetera, et cetera, or how bad I can actually feel with it um, as well. Um, I've explored... Uh, I can't say everything um, because that's why I'm, I'm here, but I've explored, I had a major car accident. Um, I had a major loss early on of a significant um, individual, um, but the pain was there before this. So I then started looking at, I mean, I've had physiotherapy, I've had past life regression. I've done as many things as I, I could find and, and try and work on. Um, I look at, you know, why is it right-sided as opposed to left, et cetera, et cetera, and all those sorts of things. I've gone through the nutrition. I've gone through um, now structural medicine. So it's all helping, but I still can't seem to shift it or I can't seem to love it. And just um, so it'd be really obviously helpful for me personally, but then also the opportunity to explore how do you deal with this because I have a lot of, of clients who, who suffer with chronic pain as well. Okay, so wanting to work through chronic pain. So thank you, thank you, Steph. And David. Hi. Um, yeah, uh, well, uh, for me, I guess my area that I'm finding um, uh, a vulnerability in is, is physical, physical health. Like I, I kind of get the experience like I'm dying a lot of the time. Um, stabbing, burning pain. I'm heading to hospital uh, soon to do uh, some some uh, uh, a, a procedure. Um, and uh, I'm also, yeah, I'm uh, selling a big business and I'm having a lot of change all the time and things. Those things are, I'm not too worried about, but it's uh, the physical health is, a, I find, uh, frustrating because I'm wanting to travel and I've got, you know, uh, a lot of opportunities and things, and but physically, um, it's brutal. Uh, and um, I get you know, stabbing and burning, and um, uh, yeah, shaking and uh, paralysis sometimes, and uh, a lot of fun things. So that's something that I'd like to uh, see the the balancing because it's been a long term thing that I've I've looked at all sorts of stuff, but it's like it's constantly been with me that I've like haven't figured out the pattern of like. I can intellectually see, but it's it's just mostly a bit of intellectual bullshit. I'd like to actually go a bit more uh, stronger in it, you know. So yeah, 
Okay, um, thank you, David. So we have, so I wanted to, so team, we have um, Brett, Ken, Steph and David who are going to, we're gonna vote for now. So you're gonna see on your screen an opportunity now to vote. You only get to vote um, for once. It will only allow you anyway. Um, so we have Brett who has the um, experience with his um, girlfriend and deciding whether to stay or not and um, whether to be committed or to leave. We have Ken who had his mother pass this morning and wants to work around um, that dynamic or maybe about the dynamic of him, the, maybe the challenge she, she had before, uh, before passing. Um, Steph is also similar to David where around um, the physical chronic pain in the neck um, and the head. And then David has again this um, chronic pain which is the stabbing, burning, shaking paralysis. So I'm gonna put this on your screen. So if you can vote now of who you would like to see in the hot seat for today. That was so interesting. So it was a very close, um, it was actually even most of the way between Brett and Ken, but whoever was last, just the two people voted for Ken. So, um, Brett, know that there's still an entanglement in, yeah, and we, yeah, that you'll get an opportunity to kind of also see some of the dynamic and also um, maybe Steph and David, given that, you know, we're looking at death and, you know, the end of life as well, then maybe they're also not saying, you know, maybe there's some um, meaning that you'll find out of your experiences through this as well. So thank you for thank you for thank you for voting. So I'll just share that so that you can see the dynamic. Um, we tend to vote as well for the for the dynamic that fits our life as well the most. So Lexi said, um, "This is hard. I had four tears forming when Ken was talking, so I got my vote." Okay. So Ken, I'm going to put you on my screen. So I just, I'm going to pin you so I just see you. All right. So during this session, everyone, when we, when I'm working with Ken and I'm asking him some questions, I'm first going to get him to paint me a picture. And, uh, and so I get a deeper understanding of what he's been going through and what his emotional charges are. And then so I can know what specifically we're going to work on and prioritize that. So I do like, I do like, a, I like a story. I like to kind of understand what's actually going inside of his mind and what he's thinking. And I'm going to get a lot of like um, information and feedback that I can also use as well. And we um, pull together at the end. So if you have questions or you hear something that's really interesting or um, feel free to put it into the chat section, Ken, I'd highly recommend you just focus on you and I, and then um, I'm definitely going to read, I'll read the questions that come through as well. Uh, um, as we go through. So uh, how can I help Ken? But you just have to unmute yourself. I, 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 wish, I wish I was great at lip reading. Yeah, that's <laughs> all right. So okay. um, I guess this story started 54 years ago when um, I was born on my mother's birthday. Um, I've also been told that it was a karmic event that started lifetimes ago that her and I have been connected through different lives in different ways. Um, yeah, I guess I had a pretty happy childhood. Didn't sort of, nothing significant that I remember that happened that was too detrimental. And when did happened. it when did it become yeah when did it start to become challenging? I guess I guess through um, high school I had a few challenges with you know um, what I perceived to be getting bullied at school and um, Mum tried to help me in that regard and I guess um, but I was also involved in in um, sport that you know and I. Would, I can remember now, later on in life, that there was several times when 
I wanted her to come and watch me and, you know, she didn't really want to do that. So I guess it's all things that you sort of brush under the table as a kid and you sort of forget as you go along. But then um, my father passed away when I was, when I was only 16 and um, I wasn't able to be with him when that happened. He was in Sydney. I had to stay home on the farm. So I guess I sort of had to grow up a fair bit and then, moved into the fact when mum came home after and dad was buried and continued on in life. And I just sort of, I feel that it was, I don't think it was intentional, but I guess later on I feel that she sort of, in some ways, took a bit of her grief and frustration out on me. Um, I... Um, did what I deemed was the right thing to do as a young man to step up to the plate and take on the responsibilities on the farm that I needed. And that's what I was doing when my dad was in hospital too. Um, and then it got to the point where, you know, we would have some horrific fights where she would be telling me that she just wishes that I would break down and cry because she didn't feel I was grieving my father. And, and you know, it wasn't something that at the time that I felt I'd needed to do I, I, I was trying to manage everything the best way that I felt I could manage it at the time and Ken just just curious so what was your relationship like when she passed like the last like you said before that she wasn't yeah. speaking to your your so, kids, so, yeah. so over this period of um I've got um, five kids and she has had almost zero participation in any of their lives the two eldest ones she had a little bit um and then I got married later on and had another three kids and um yeah she basically had nothing to do with them I used to travel down from Lock and Var when we lived there Coffs Harbour and Brisbane to you know and I'd offer to pick her up and take her up to you know spend some time with us and the kids and It'd be literally a case I'd get to the door and she'd have an excuse why she couldn't go, you know, a migraine or wasn't feeling well or had a doctor's appointment she'd forgotten about or so Ken, what whatever. Did, yeah, and so what did you wish and hoped it was going to be? Like, how did you wish and hoped she was going to be instead? I guess I wish I could see how much involvement she had with my sister's kids and how she had basically been raising them. Um, they all lived when she took my sister in to her home and sort of raised her four kids for her. Um, and I guess I felt a bit obvious, envious, jealous towards my sister that my mum seemed to be continually bailing her out, is now raising her kids, didn't want anything to do with mine um, and had some pretty horrific arguments with her about it until I got to the point where I, I, I guess I did a bit of work through the breakthrough experience and another facilitator to come to understand to the fact that you know that, that nothing was going to change it was just how my mum was and um so i've spent probably the last six years fluctuating constantly in my mind about um accepting that you know everyone has their choice you know she was choosing that she didn't want to have anything to do with the kids. And then I'd have, um, I'd flick over to the other side where I'd be thinking, well, you know, is it, it's affecting the kids. It's affecting me that my mum has nothing to do with them. So I hadn't spoken to my mum up until moved over to Perth in 2020, COVID kicked in obviously. And then I hadn't spoken to my mum probably for, I don't know, great amount of two years. I messaged her at Christmas but didn't hear from her. And then the next time I had contact with her, I rang her on our birthday just to wish her a happy birthday. But I didn't realise that she was in the home. And then the next contact I got was last Monday last week. My sister rang me and said that she had caught COVID and she was, she'd been asymptomatic. And then Tuesday she, or Monday she'd started to go downhill. And Tuesday, um, 
night I flew from Perth over to Sydney and then drove up to see her on Wednesday. And um, she, she had refused. She didn't want, she'd always said she didn't want to be resuscitated. Apparently I wasn't aware of that. And she also had directed them that there was to be no medical intervention so that she couldn't be taken to hospital or put on a drip or anything like that. And she wouldn't eat or drink. So it got to the point on Friday afternoon where she was quite congested. You couldn't really have a vegetable conversation with her at all. And then it was decided that on Saturday morning that we would start um, end of life treatment. So I've spent the last three or four days, whatever it was, just visiting, sitting with her. But it was extremely difficult to talk with her because she doesn't know anything about me. So me really and what I've done over the last few years work-wise and travel and, and doesn't know much about my kids. So and then on Saturday evening my niece and the sister my niece was there saying, you know, her goodbye because she had to go back to Adelaide and saying how much she loved grandma and um, you know that she loved the deal and she was going to miss her and then it, and the whole time that all of this is going on I've been doing the the breakthrough stuff in my in my head trying to continually keep myself you know in the balance to see both sides of how it's served me and served her by not being in contact and one thing and another and then that flared me up with the fact well my kids can't couldn't say that to her because they don't know her and yeah so and then yesterday afternoon I actually got the three younger kids to um do a quick FaceTime and they you know they said they loved her and she sort of nodded and acknowledged that they'd spoken to her and then yeah this morning um yeah she passed away so thank you for sharing so if if we were to have an outcome that would be that would help you to feel more complete with this what would it be like if you could have love and gratitude for one thing what would it be well i guess i guess i am experiencing that anyway because i don't i haven't cried today i have i've actually sort of gotten a little bit emotionally better over the last couple of days but i guess part of what is now tearing at me is because even, and this will probably relate to Brett who I voted for ironically, my work life and my relationship with my wife has been pretty, um, pretty tough over the last couple of years to the point where I'm, I had been getting myself in a position where I was ready to walk away. And then I put that off for a few weeks because I had a son turning 18, didn't want it to coincide with his 18th in the end of June. And obviously my birthday and then- um, I'm so, so of, can, can I totally understand that there's there's probably a lot of stuff that you could ultimately work on, but you came with your- your yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Around, around your mum. So can I yeah. can I point out something maybe that I think that would be valuable to work on? And you can say yes, or you think no, there's something else. Yeah. But, um, so the the thing that I hear when you tell your story, which I'm really, it's beautiful to have a picture of what's been going on in the long term. I can see the long term dynamic that you've had with your mum in terms of her not being um, there, you know, as present for you or there for you as much as you would have liked, and also not being there for your kids. If you clear that dynamic, would that be helpful? tonight yeah yeah okay so let's 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 really focus and hone in on that um so i want you to go to a specific moment where you would have um oh, so let's go to the moment actually where your niece is saying goodbye to your your mum so i want you to go yep. to that moment okay so if you're if your three younger kids were with you at the same time and they were also saying their goodbyes to your mum their grandma what would have been the drawback to each of those kids and to you and to your mum well, the drawback would be the fact that being i guess the uncomfortableness through the fact that 
all parties didn't have a, a close relationship and um, you know I guess it would be rather than an authentic um, exchange of emotions it'd be I guess it would for the kids it would feel like they would have to for want of a better word perform or you know probably express things that they didn't necessarily feel they and do, I guess the you, same from a mum. Do you guess or is that certain? Yeah, it would be certain. Okay. And isn't that part of the challenge around grief? It's that we think that we need to show up in a way that's sad and, you know, say say yeah. no, or say all nice things to the, the individual. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So go back again. What else would be the drawback to each of your children, your mum and you, if they ha had been able to say goodbye? Like physically there to say goodbye. You know, I would have taken them away from their, their lives. My daughter's got a, a netball grand final that she's got to play in this Sunday. So she would have been taken away from training and distracted from that. Um, she's expected to play quite a significant role in that. Um, my boys would have missed out on their school. and their sport, I guess there's, you know, inherent risks with them traveling across the country, you know, with air travel and other things possibly could go wrong as well, so. Okay, well, not necessarily the wrong, but it just exposures, exposures yeah, yeah, yeah. health-wise. Yeah. yeah, so coming back again, what about from the, um, like, seeing their grandma in that physical state before she passed, what would have been the drawback to them? Oh, the, I guess the, vi the visual yeah. You guess? So, Ken, I want you to say certain. <laughs> so if you say a guess, I want you to catch yourself before I do. But each time you say a guess, I'm going to stop you. So making sure that you do give like a certain answer. You have certain... Sorry, yeah, okay. yeah. Visual side of seeing her like that and, and not, you know, having that as their last memories of her rather than the way they remember her last time I saw her. And what would be the drawback to them if that's the last memory they have of their grandma before she passed? What's the co what do you what do you perceive to be the cost to them? It would create, you know, I guess add to their grief and and um, pain that they get, that they have to manage their way through as it is. Um, it would just Sorry. Do you guess or is it certain? Not certain. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And what's the drawback to them then if they're having to have that in their mind? Then they would have to do work to yeah, dissolve and balance up mm. rather than being able to remember the way that they do remember it. Mm. So are you certain then that them not being there to say goodbye, that there's equal benefits to drawbacks to them? Yeah. Okay. So if, so I want you to go to another moment that I want you to go to a moment where you, so you said you drove down one time to see her and she picked, you picked her up and she said she couldn't see the kids. Remember yeah. how you, yeah. So I want you to go to that moment. So where and when are you? So um, standing on her veranda at her home. Yeah, and where, uh, what year is it? Well, it happened many times, but the time probably that most remember that it happened last was yeah, about 2017. Okay. Uh, and uh, and she she's specifically saying what to you? That she wasn't able to, to go because she was you know, quite feeling, you know, was feeling unwell. Okay, and so um, knowing that it's a, um, a co-creation for everyone, so at the moment there's a lot of weight through your story on your mum not wanting to see the, the kids and you, but underneath that, you and the kids also didn't want to see her as well. So we're yeah. going to bring that unconscious conscious and we're going to make uh, more awareness of what's actually happening so it would have been what would have been the drawback to you and the kids specifically if 
your mum had come at that particular time in 2017? Well, a drawback would have been the tension between my, my wife and my mum because, um, yeah, there was friction between the two of them. Mm. More from more from my mum's side. Um, and what would have been the drawback yeah. for you then if there's friction between your mum and your wife? Well, I would have had to. I'd have been caught in the middle of it. Would have been extremely uncomfortable. Probably created arguments, and and then I would be under the well, put myself under pressure to try and find a way to to manage that or keep the peace. Okay, and so and what's the drawback when you have to play peacekeeper? What's the cost uh, of you? Well, I'm obviously probably having to choose one side or the other. Mm -hmm. So did your mum then by not coming, she made you didn't have to choose and you could just choose your wife? Yeah. And what was the benefit of being able to just choose your wife at that time? Well, the benefit was yeah, probably kept the family unit a lot, a lot happier, I guess. Yeah, a lot happier. You guess or are you certain? Yeah, certain. So, because what, what did you do as a family together with your mum not there that you wouldn't have been able to do if your mum was there? Um, just went out to dinner, spent time together, went to the beach. Yeah. We bonded as a family. Yeah. Do you have a tight family? Like, are you close with your kids? Yeah, very close. Mm, so did your mom. So we have this, we have this misperception that parents are supposed to do these do things for us, but it's sometimes in their inaction is when they do something the most for us. So it's in your mom actually giving you space that actually allows yeah. a greater connection with the, the the people that you love the most. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That, that's love, isn't it? Yeah. And sometimes it's really easy to step forward and do something for someone, but and it's actually harder to know that the best thing you can do for someone is actually step away. True. I guess um, one of the things I am grateful for her um, is she's allowed me to explore the world and the whole and rather than keeping me attached to her, her apron strings of, you know, I've travelled and worked all over Australia and overseas and I've just had all my life that I could never have imagined and she'd have been, I guess, for want of a better word, clingy and wanted my attachment to her, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Mm. And I wouldn't have been able to provide the life that I've been able to provide for my kids and my family either. Okay, and so let's look at that if you'll because remember that the people who are around us are also impacting our values and and influencing our values. So if your mum had been more around your kids, what would have been the drawback, just in general then, the drawback to your kids if your if their grandma was around more? Given that she has different values, she has a different lens of the world, what, what would have been the drawback to them? Um, they wouldn't be as mature and as independent and, I guess, worldly as they are. What, are you guess or are you certain? Certain. So how do you, how do you know that? What, what would have been the drawback of your mum? Because they're all, they're, they're all what they had as a result of her not being around, but what would have been the drawback if she was around? She would have done a lot of things for them. Um, would have you know, looked after them when their mum or I wasn't around at the time or, you know, not probably allowed them to step up and take on the responsibility that we've required them to do at different times. And what would be the drawback if they weren't as responsible and they didn't have, they had someone else coming in and doing 
and mothering them or grandmothering them, what would have been the drawback for them? They wouldn't be as, um, yeah, as responsible and mature and, yeah, and what grounded you, kids as they are, I guess. You guess or are you certain? Uh, certain. And what was your, when you go back, because five kids must show that you have a little bit of a value on um, on children or maybe something else that leads to children. But <laughs> but what's the, you obviously had a, a vision maybe for your, for your children and your future for your children. What's the, what did you envision? Well, the original vision was never to have kids, but obviously <laughs> that certainly changed. Um, I want them to do um, be everything they're capable of being. Mm. And I also want them to realise that um, you don't have to, I guess, stay in your, the small world that we know about as, we, as we're growing and learning that there's so much else out there. That, and I guess to give them the, the courage and the, lack of fear and the braveness to go out and explore that in every in every facet mm. and even if you do that you've still got the people that love and care for you're still going to be there waiting for you to come back if you need to mm. and so given that you have a high value on personal development and you you um, do apply the work and you want to resolve some of your own emotions. How is your the pain that you perceive your mom has, um, you know, you've had a dynamic with your mom, the pain there, how has that actually helped you with your own personal development journey that's actually impacted your kids? If I hadn't have had that, I certainly wouldn't have pursued it with the, I guess, the broadness that I have, whether it be, you know, Martini yourself, other uh, facilitators that I've done work with, um, a lot of work in a different spiritual field and you know, just, I guess, a craving for knowledge is probably more since I turned 30 sort of thing where I just want to take in as much knowledge and from as many different things as I, I can and yeah, expand myself. And where does that come from? Like where, or where is that? Where, where does that stem from? I, um, I guess it stems from my mum because I noticed that some of the things that I've originally started reading and looking at with stuff that she had either read herself or um, shown me or we'd talked about, even when I went into her room on Wednesday, I'd see a book on her table about um, uh, is it Dean Brown's demons and like angels and demons, de angels and demons, and um, yeah, all of that. So it, yeah, it's all stuff that I've been doing research and reading and listening to or tied to all of that over the last few years, particularly in the last um, two years, I guess, with what's been going on around the world. So even though I haven't been close to her, she certainly impacted me in, in, in the ways that I guess I'm curious about what's out there. And um, so can you have more gratitude that some that your mum has given you something that you find a lot of purpose and wisdom and understanding in as a result? Yeah, I, um, I certainly can. I even to the point where she challenged me a lot through her beliefs with, and um morals around religious that has caused me or religion and stuff that's caused me to go to the other extreme and see what the opposite is that you know not and to and to try and find something that I click with it's somewhere in between somewhere mm. in the middle 
And so let's just backtrack a second and go back to if if you perceived your mum to have what, like wanted you to um, and been closer to you. So if you had this the the, the perception that you were closer to your mum than your sister was, and your mum looked after your kids instead of hers, what would be the drawback? I think I'm a person that loves to do what I want to do. And oh. I wouldn't have done that. Mm. So can you see why potentially you co-created your mum to want distance from you because you actually wanted more independence from her? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, okay. Well, um, I, yeah. And I do like to, I guess I struggle with authority and by me being able to do what I want to do, I... I challenge authority in a lot of different ways to the point where if, if I do cross a line, I guess um, it pushes me that I have to deal with it then. So it sort of gives me the opportunity to really be responsible and manage my own life and my own actions, you know. Yeah. That's similar to what your kids have. They have, you know, responsibility, you know, the same is yeah. what you have when your mum's not 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 around. So what else would be the drawback if your mum was the one that raised your kids? Um, oh, they'd be totally different children, to totally different kids, and I get and the difference between my mum's values and my values. Yeah, it certainly would have caused a lot of clashes and mm. yeah, yeah, struggle in that in that um, space. It's for sure. So, are you saying that you had a higher value on your your family and maybe your wife as well than you did on your mum? Yeah. Yeah. And so, how was your sister? How did she match or meet her mum's um, values more? Where, where was where was there because when we connect when we have our values met so what was your sister doing or what values do they have similar that allowed them to connect more because you're saying you wanted more independence you wanted to make your own decisions you wanted to travel the world you wanted to be connected to your kids not have to choose between your wife and your mum so what made your sister more connected to your mum? That's something that I'm really not, I'm not sure about. Um, see, for I perceive that my mum was continually bailing my sister out and my sister took advantage of that and over the last few years it appears that my sister I guess has grown up a fair bit. But let's she have... then started to look after mum, you know, in her older years, um, which took the responsibility away from me, mm. having to do that or feel obligated that it was something that I needed to do. So what was which the benefit? would have been extremely difficult. Mm. And so what was the benefit? Totally different. Sorry. What was the benefit of your sister then having to take care of your mum? It took responsibility off me having to do it. Mm. Yeah. Which would have been impossible, especially in the last three years, being on two totally different sides of the country. Mm -hmm. So what else was the benefit then of them? What was the benefit to you of them being closer, your sister and your mum? My mum had someone to care and look after her even if she didn't appear to acknowledge that um, and it gave my sister a sense of responsibility to I guess well I keep saying I guess I'm sick of saying I guess gave my sister a, a need to step up and be responsible and take some ownership for her actions and and, and care speaking? for someone yeah, so can you see that the entanglement, you were already taking care of yourself and actually taking care of five kids and your wife and 
and looking after all like all seven of you all together and so then you know your sister through your mum you know passing away as well it gave her an opportunity to step up because yeah. you did you're you already you already learned that lesson yeah yeah so what else is the benefit that your mum and your sister were closer together what was the benefit to you that they were closer together taught me partly the pain that I went through when my father passed away. I totally ignored the impact of that on my sister. She was three years younger, well, she's three years younger than me. I was so focused for so many years about how I was affected that I completely never ever took into consideration how it impacted her. So her the void that she would have had at that time through the way that I um, behaved, it's given her the opportunity to, to, to receive the love from mum that she didn't get when she was younger through and what, and what my attention. Would, yeah, and what would have been the drawback then if you had been around and you had been the one that your mum was giving attention? So she moved from the relationship with your dad to the relationship with you, what would have been the drawback? If, if you had been the close, what would have been the drawback to your sister? She would have continued on a downward spiral. And what does that mean? Well, possibility of losing her altogether. The mm -hmm. kid's not having a mum. Yeah. So can you We're not having a sister. Yeah. Yeah, goosebumps with that one. Yeah. So can you see the entanglement was actually creating life for them to be connected? Yeah. And that your journey and your values led elsewhere. Like you you weren't going to stay connected because you were challenging and that you wanted out and exiting from that dynamic as well because you traveled the world. You went and, you know, you moved and you had kids and you wanted to find, you know, a solid um, connection with your own children. Yeah that your focus was elsewhere and her focus also was el elsewhere as well. And is, yeah. is that okay? Like, is it okay then also for your kids to then grow up and go, you know what, I don't want to be so connected to dad anymore and I want to go off and do my own thing. Is it okay for them to do that? The one of the two. And that's... And so then can't, can you see that your mum also might have wanted that for you too? Yeah. Are you certain of that? I'm certain of it. As I said, I'm, I have great gratitude that she that we probably weren't that close because it's enabled me to go and, as I said, have a life that I could never have imagined growing up in a small rural community coming from a farm. It was, yeah, I've, I've had a fantastic life. Yeah. And experienced so many different things that, you know, it's just, and it would have all been so different if it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't the way that it was. For sure. And so then I have one one more question. So your mum could have passed any time. She could have she could have passed any time. So why why now for you? Because I made the effort to contact her not to we needed to see each other again before she passed. And so what was the benefit of being able to see her? All the charges that I had about what had taken place, um, even with my sister, I haven't felt a need to to broach or drag any of that up. I'm just none of that matters anymore. It's it's you know my, it's like what's what's done was done, and yeah, it's just move on and. Yeah, so start a new life, you know, a new beginning for everyone. So, but why, why now for you? Because I have to stop procrastinating and make some decisions and take some responsibility mm. in, other, in other facets of my yeah. life. 
death has a tendency to give us more perspective or a wake up call about our life. Yeah. You, only get, you only get one, one, one chance, one go. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So what else was the benefit this week of spending time with her? I've been able to get away from, I guess, the feeling of it being entrapped in a situation that I don't know what to do one way or the other in regards to uh, my relationship. And even though my mind dis was distracted with my mum, it's also given me the opportunity to probably clear my thoughts in regards to my relationship and, and then, yeah, be able to make a decision there on what, what I'm going to do moving forward mm. and possibly my career, my career as well. So it or sounds like, well. yeah. And have you been thinking about those changes or, um, you know, decisions that you have to make about work and about your relationship and your family life for a while, or is it just something that's come up of late? Yeah, months and months and months. Mm. floundering from one indecision or one decision or with one thought at a time. So Ken, know this, that the universal principle states that never get a gain without a loss or a loss without a gain. So with the death of your mum, where's the life being created with inside of you? And around you. I don't have to worry about my mum anymore and what will mm -hmm. be with her. Um, I guess, oh, Jesus, I keep saying that word. I have a different perspective or appreciation for what's important that we spend an entire lifetime gathering, building, trying to create something to in the end, the only things that matter in the end are that we're with our loved ones and that our loved ones know that we love them and vice versa. Um, I've, for 30 odd years, I've pushed myself right to the limit as far as work, all of that, you know, everything I've done, I've, I've, I've pushed myself and drove myself because I felt I had to prove something to someone that um, you don't have to prove anything to anyone because you know, those that matter to you still love you regardless. So is that getting your life back again then? Because you don't, you don't have a life when you're trying to prove to other people. I don't you have, have a life. Else's life. I've, yeah. I've put on a lot of weight. I don't. You know, I was extremely heavily involved in my horses and my equestrian sport at a high level. I left all that behind. I got to the point a couple of years ago where I just felt like an empty shell because I didn't know anything about me anymore. I'd given all of it away to please everyone else or what I perceived to please everyone else. And uh, I forgot who I was. So is the greatest gift that your mum can give you in her passing is to get your life back again? Yeah. So how are you feeling now? A lot more emotional than I did earlier, but yeah, yeah I feel good. Yeah. Thank you. You're most welcome. So if we were to, if you were to have a look in the room, who resembles your mum? So it can be a name, it can be uh, a face, it can be someone who's on camera, off camera, but someone who, um, in the room that has, a, it can be a male, female. Um, 
how do I see who's in the room? Oh, uh, are you on your phone? <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah. Um, I think you can. Um, so well, let's do a bit of creative. Um, so what I want you to do is check your intuition. So you, if you go to the chat section, I think in the chat section you could, um, you could scroll through people's names. Can you do that? Or if someone's, I don't know how the phone works um, in terms of being able to see who else is in the room. Does anyone else know how to do it? Maybe if you swipe, I think if you swipe. Uh, participants, hang on, yep. Okay, I just swipe right, thank you. It's not Tinder. <laughs> can you see the can you see the names now yeah i'm just scrolling through it now <laughs> yep stephanie james yes okay so steph you've been chosen as ken's mum so it's an honor to get chosen because there's a message in this for you. So this will represent a son or a son-like person in your life. So Ken, what is it in your heart that you would love to share with your mum? Thank you for being the most incredible mum that I could ever could have wished for. I know you didn't feel that you'd done a worthy job or that you were a good mum and you, you you know you battled with your own personal demons and often you know fell behind the shadows and struggled with that for a long a lot of your life you felt like you were alone but you weren't we all loved you very dearly. You're an extremely clever, smart, intelligent woman. Right up until your last moment, she's still, yeah, just an amazing woman. So many talents. Um, <laughs> and you, um, you know, you lost your love, the love of your life, and you and you never stop loving that person. You know, right until until today that you passed, and now you'll be together. He's there waiting for you. Um, you've enabled me to to be become everything that I could have imagined as a man and as a person. Um, yeah, I just have so much gratitude that you are my mum and yeah, I love you so much and I thank you so much for for allowing me to become and explore the world and become everything that, that I've become and you know and to to be the father that I've that I am to my kids and, and they're a reflection of the way that you, you raised me with your beliefs and 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 morals and that because you know pretty much anyone that meets my kids all have you know amazing comments on, on what great kids they are and they're a reflection of me and their mum and they're a reflection of your your parenting on me as well so yeah I um I thank you for that and yeah I love you and yeah I'm just I'm glad you're at peace now. And um, yeah. And what would you like to share with your son? Oh, thank you. Thank you for saying all of that. You, you are amazing. Absolutely amazing. You took off on your own. All by yourself and you created this family and you created this wife and you are my inspiration I was stuck in the same place I never I, I didn't really travel you did all that you did all of that on your own your sister that wasn't her role we needed you. We needed you to do exactly what you did. 
And I didn't want you to feel bad about that. This was what you were meant to do. You have led our family. You have truly led our family. I cannot even tell you because it's, it does seem strange that because you were not here, physically here, but when we talk on the phone and I hear those kids, I'm just in love with everything you've done. Everything you've done, all you. And if I had a little bit in that, I'm so grateful. So grateful. You've done so much for my life. Even when we would just have conversations on the phone, you just lifted me up in a way the other kids couldn't do. That was just for you. You're so inspirational. And I want you to keep doing what you're doing. Keep letting yourself be bigger and bigger. This is what I want for you. Don't hold back. I love you so, so, so much, so much. The way you are right now. I love you just the way you are. Don't change anything. Just let it grow, okay? Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, Steph. So I can see lots of people are crying. Oh so yeah. Definitely, definitely touches a, a part of my a part of my story too in, in many different ways. Um so Ken, how are you how are you feeling? Yeah, I feel good. Thank you. Do you feel complete? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And do you I feel, feel I feel brave and I'm going to go forth without fear and I'm going to do as best as I can to do everything I'm capable of doing. Yeah, yeah it's time to live your, your life now. Yeah. So thank you. So I'd love to hear from the, from the room. Tell me, because I know that there tends to be an entanglement in uh, people's dynamics, things that are happening for them. So I'd love to hear from, from you. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your, your insights, some of the personal reflections you had uh, for, from maybe Ken's story or from even Stephanie share. So who would like to start first? Barbara, I see you say thank you. So thank you for, thank you for joining us as well. Oh, Barbara, are you talking? Did you want to unmute? Yeah, you, yeah. Did you want to? <laughs> Barbara, you just have to unmute. Now I'm unmuted. <laughs> I'd love to hear your voice, girl. <laughs> I just want to say uh, thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Steph. The other stuff. Who's the, the other stuff? The other stuff. Um, firstly, thanks to Ken and to Steph. Um, the synchronicity and the entanglement is just like beautiful as well as mind blowing. Um, over the last couple of weeks in our team sessions, we've covered things like um, unconditional love and that that transcends space and time. Um, and just having that freedom to be able to love from a distance and know that you're loved from a distance and to be able to love in your own way, but also allowing others to do it in their own way is quite, um, is, is quite, sometimes a challenge to take on but it is extremely extremely beautiful to watch mm. in action and to be part of I totally agree like it's we have this idealistic view of of maybe family or or love that it has to be close and you have to be around each other but love transcends space and time so it's like loving each other in the in the spaces in the in the emptiness so thank you. 
I know um, Claire was also sharing as well. So Claire's daughter's dog died this morning and she is our member manager at Maximum Growth. And so when she found out her dog um, had died through for uh, his application to apply for the hot seat. So, and then she's like, if, um, if, as she looked at Ken and had not met Ken before, so first time seeing her, him, and says that he, she look, he looks like her father who died like 12 years ago. So I'm hoping, Claire, through this dynamic for you that there's been some healing. And I know your daughter has been also listening in to this session, so I hope that she also has had some healing with her dynamic as well. So thanks. It's okay. Um, Kim said that was brilliant. Um, thank you, Ken and Tanya. I really resonate with some, sometimes inaction from a parent gives us the most value. And it does. Like, remember that we work on, in, if you apply the Demartini method, we work on a specific trait, action or inaction. And we find that some of our inactions, there's equal benefits to drawbacks. And we have a tendency if someone is inconsiderate or someone is not not um, there for us, that those are things that we label as, as negative and bad. But when we actually find out what's the benefit with like Ken found, looked at the benefits, it's like he had more freedom. He didn't have to stay in the small country town anymore. He'd go travel the world. He had more connection with his, his wife, which maybe created more stability in with, you know, um, raising a family of, well, it sounds like maybe three kids were made there or five kids altogether, but the, the more stability within the family as a result. So it's actually her inaction was the thing that was creating him to meet his values and have more stability with his values, which is powerful. Kim. Such freedom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Freedom as a parent and freedom, yeah, to love as our parents. Well. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Steph said, no one knew this, but I was Ken in that I left home in 18 and made my own way. I also have a sister who stayed close to my mum. Anyone goosebumps with that? I also have the same story. So I also have a sister who's very close to my 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 mum and um, I'm also very, very distant from her. Um, so I also have a similar, uh, the, I'm the traveller versus the, the one that stays close to the home dynamic. I just, want to, I just want to say one thing that I didn't bring up earlier. You know, mm -hmm. like we, we all know about the synchronicity that some things happen at the exact moment. Mm -hmm. I added one of the other facilitators to my Facebook as a friend, you know, from Brisbane, Helen. Mm -hmm. At the exact moment that my mum passed, Helen came on as my friend on Facebook and she's the one that gave me the breakthrough with my did my work with my father. Wow. Gary Spong. I, I didn't know it when she because I was online when when she clicked and and became friends. But when my sister rang me and told me my mum had passed and the time, it was pretty much spot on exactly the same moment. So mm. yeah, just mind blowing. Thank you. You're welcome. Lexi says that's incredible. And it is. Like it's just the tra transforming, the transformation. Would anyone else like to share? I can share, Tanya. This story is like identically, um, almost identically from what I've heard, like resonate with my story. And <laughs> um I do have deep appreciation to the fact that actually my sisters are next to my mom because I'm away. And um, yeah, and when my dad passed away near yeah, nine, nine years ago, that's when I get my life back in a way. Yeah. The journey start of that self-development and where I am now. <laughs> and that, yeah, that closeness when I uh, listening, the benefits and drawbacks, like uh, my journey, in terms of the getting closer to the kids. So it's just mm. like a line, um, light bulb. And mm. I said, my mom, like I used to upset with her 
when I went back to Russia and she would just drop us and go to summer house with my niece, right? And I'm saying like, I, I used to so like judging, judging about it, <laughs> like I took, it took me so long. I bring my kids to you and you just don't even like paying attention. Yeah, but the realization that that allow actually my kids to be more independent and focus, me focus, give that focus on them and them to grow in a different way, not that keeping mom's, my mom's value, which I was like 100% opposite in a way. Mm. Yeah. So we can all thank our siblings that are really close to our parents. <laughs> we give them love. It's just because of them. It's like I allow myself to travel and explore the world, which is my value as well. Yeah. yeah. But also gives you freedom to go and do what, you know, maybe, maybe you have not saying there's a greater or lesser purpose, but maybe you just have a different purpose to go and serve the world. You know, maybe their purpose is part of their purpose and part of their journey and part of their lesson and learning is to care for someone in the, you know, care for someone and, and care for the parent. Uh, you know, even today I was thinking because I meet some people from Ukraine and talking about what's going on there. And in my mind, it's like, at least I take away because I have a nephews, which is like they're waiting to be mobilized. Like, and if the government would say they have to go and surf and they're young and I'm thinking at least I took my way from this situation. So they don't have to be like my son specifically don't have to do it. Right, so it's kind of, I remember like Martini said, once upon a time, like uh, some offsprings go away to save mm. family. Because in my mind, I oh, always- Yeah, like I, I to preserve the um, genetics, one fam family member goes away because if they stay, you know, if we all the families keep on staying together, the likelihood of, you know, potentially something happening um, and- Yeah, I, I, and I think- yeah. I had it since childhood because we've been so much drained in, uh, from the Second World War. Mm. From how many uh, men uh, or how many casualties from the war and specifically men. And because it's a compulsory to, to be in the war, like for the boys, like once mm. they're 18, they take them to army and they have to serve and doesn't matter how much prepared uh, they can take them like to Chechnya, to whatever, any like hot spots. And it's kind of every mother's, you know, like, you know, the biggest concern, how not, not to take, not to let the boys to go to army. Mm. It's, it's, it's scary. And so it's, it's some, so somehow in my mind, I, when I, um, that's what I'm looking, my appreciation to my ex-husband, <laughs> that he was persistent, me keeping here, like, you know, mm. yeah, it's, it's all entangled and, um, oh, so you have now greater appreciation for your ex-husband of keeping you here in Australia well, yeah. of having to go back and take your son back and potentially him having to go to to the military but, and train. Yeah, so my son, unless he chooses to, for example, he doesn't have to go yeah. to the military because he got dual. So he's not inter like he's got dual, dual passport and Russia would not be interested in him because he's Australian citizen as well, even though that he also but Russian citizenship. For, for sure. But can you see then it's the, the, the entanglement of the family dynamic of your siblings being closer to your parents than, or, you know, or your dad and then allowing you freedom to then come here that actually gives you your life. And so yeah. can the same the same dynamic as well like we 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 think that oh, i didn't get something but actually what did you what did you get instead mm -hmm. and really you have a you know the greater opportunity for life right now and for my kids to which is the same for ken he also has a greater opportunity for his kids to go and have freedom to do what they want to do as well so thank you for sharing lilia it's a i love how um beautifully entangled um, all of this is. Let me know if there's anyone else who'd like to share before we wrap up. David said, thank you so much, Ken. I spent the weekend at my nephew's wedding. My mum, his grand passed away last year and there was some energy stuff that the wedding, you helped me see how everything that's happened at the wedding, even though it didn't seem like it at the time was perfectly in order. That's beautiful. 
So thank you so much for coming along and joining in in the hot seat. It is an event that we run every uh, two months. So it's an opportunity for you to have um, choose someone in the hot seat to go through their um whatever's going on for them emotionally. It can be, sometimes it's grief, sometimes it's business, sometimes it's relationship, whole different topics. So if you know anyone who would love to come and participate in a hot seat or apply to be in the hot seat, please feel free to just send the link that is either um, put in the chat or in the link below if you're watching the recording. And so please share this because it's an opportunity, one, to get exposure to universal principles and some questions that can be really helpful to shift mindset give them even if they're not chosen they still get to see that the shifts and results and maybe they can go and find a facilitator or come to maximum growth classes to be able to shift their dynamic know that they don't have to sit in their pain and suffering for longer than they choose I want to thank ken for coming and being brave and sharing your inner world with us definitely very grateful and also thanks to brett david and steph as well for sharing so i hope you guys also got had some value from today's session as well so just um brett said i got that because i didn't get chosen i get to choose myself there you go oh yeah yep so, so thank you. And if you're interested in coming along, so we do have, so throughout the year, we have maximum growth my, um, transformation days. So it's an opportunity for you to come and apply the Martini method, which is some of the questions I asked inside of the session with Ken. It gives you an opportunity to transform your inner world if you've got something that you're working on and you'd love to have a solid six hours of working in a group session. Also having the transcendental completion closing um, um, session at the very end which will be really beautiful so if you want to come on that will also put the link in the chat section as well um, well I hope to see you there and I will see you definitely at the next perfect time all right thank you guys have a beautiful rest of the day wherever you are in the world all right take care bye thank you you're most welcome. You're most welcome. Have a beautiful day. And thank you again. Thanks, Ken. And thanks, Steph. Okay. All right. Take care, guys. Bye.